The nine and nine. The nine and nine. The nine and nine. Gets me every time. Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. All right, number nine. We showed you this slide from Detroit's Belle Isle yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had to close it down just four hours after reopening it post pandemic. Be you know, they waxed it up and yeah. they shined it a little, maybe too much because <laughs> people were going too fast. That reminded us of this for Larry. Oh, yeah. On the concrete slide. On a concrete yeah. slide. Old school. That's how we roll. In Boston. You went down on <laughs> cardboard, you used to Yeah, do? I used to go down on cardboard. Great form, Larry. Ooh. Great form. Well, I knew just from my past experience in kindergarten. Not to fight it, you just got to go with yeah. it. Otherwise, it'll be Ride so much it. worse. Yeah. All right, here's oh, another this is one. That guy oh. at the Brewers game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ooh, he, he cracked six his arm. ribs. Yeah. It, Look at you, Larry. You kind of came out of that fight. Yeah. As soon as anything touches the cement that isn't cardboard, you just like stop <laughs> and everything goes forward. And it's st a cement slide is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Safety sure first. Why. Yeah. You know, they don't even let the kids go near it now for really? like their summer camps. But we used to take field trips there so we could <laughs> use it. Yeah. That's the difference with kids yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. And their parents. Yeah. <laughs> all right, number eight. Uh, we've all had a bucket of uh, chicken from Kentucky Fried Chicken, but have you ever had a bucket of beef? Oh. <laughs> What Maybe do you, know? you remember this, Larry. Back in 1968, the Colonel tried to break into the beef and pork no game, and he opened up a new store and he called it Kentucky Roast Beef and Ham. Oh. More than 100 KRBs opened up nationwide. A roast beef sandwich went for just 69 cents. Unfortunately, it didn't last. And in 1970, Kentucky Roast Beef and Ham died, along with a lot of people's oh, dreams. What a shame. Kentucky beef. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, the uh, guillotine was first used in Paris in 1792, a man accused of robbery and murder. Oh, a yeesh. crowd gathered to watch the new device take his life. Within minutes, he was brought out, the blade dropped, the murderer was dead. But the crowd wasn't satisfied. Oh. They said the guillotine was too efficient, not entertaining enough. Oh, they gosh. were used to public hangings, death oh, by swords, sure. breaking at the wheel, crushed by stones. Uh, they were, you know, if there were reviewers in that day, the sure. consensus was the guillotine gets two stars out of five. Oh, that's mm. interesting. It's very effective, but not that entertaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little graphic, though. Yeah. It really is, even the yeah. drawing. It would have been good for the TikTok because it's quick, right? Oh, yeah. You know, it's yeah, all stop. About yeah, yeah, in and out fast. <laughs> Ugh, number six. Sometimes you want to sip on a cold one when you go for a bike ride, Larry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah the you do. 70s. Here's a cup holder for your handlebars. You put a coffee in there, maybe a sodi. You know, about 100 things, uh, 100 of these things on sale online. This one is really simple, though. You just clip it on there, and you can flip it over to fit small or large bottles or cups. 50 bucks, though. Oh. Well, there you go. Listen, if you can drink a cup of coffee while riding a bike, you're not riding hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, number five. This clip is from 2013. It's from a short documentary about nuclear waste, and it just happens to be shot in Chicago. But none of that matters. It's just some very, something very random happens. Take okay. The interesting thing is they call it pyroprocessing, but it's a molten salt process. They're dissolving this thing in a <laughs> molten salt, and they're doing electrochemistry on it. Why don't they call it molten salt? They want no association with molten salt, because then there it brings up that. another superior so, uh, thing, molten salt. If you don't know, uh, you see that guy who walks into the hotel, that's, uh, what's his job? George Lucas George says Lucas. right on the screen yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Just walking by. Not nice. And you know what? He walked knowing there was a camera there, so he yeah. knew yeah. he was probably giving someone a, a good cameo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. All right, number four from 1948 to 1952, the White House underwent a complete gut rehab. It oh. happened under President Truman. 
right when he moved in. He quickly noticed how old the building was. Engineers confirmed for him it was at risk of collapse. Wow. They updated it, completing gutting in the process. The Trumans lived across the street in the Blair House for three years during the renovations. Look at that. Jeez. Hmm. All right, number three. If you need a week-long reset, you might want to think about heading to the old Burning Man. It kicks off next week in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. Tens of thousands of people attend each year. They build a sprawling city in the desert only to tear it down after a few days. It gets incredibly sandy, it's super hot, there's no showers. Uh, but there are plenty of drugs and questionable behavior. You can buy a $600 ticket. And once you get there, everything is free, free food, free water, free booze, all of it. The event is an attempt at a sort of utopia. Many attendees report having transformative experiences that made them feel more connected uh, to yeah. humanity. Well, drugs will do that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That's got your name all over it, Robin. I can oh. see you out there. No showers. Camping. Camping, sand. walking in the desert, hot, schmitzy. I can engage in uh, questionable behavior for far less than $600. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well. As you well know, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, it was 90 years ago today, August 24th, 1932. Amelia Earhart took off on a solo trip across America. Oh, good for her. She became the first woman to fly nonstop across the U.S. Earhart took That's off so from Los good. Angeles nope. and landed in Newark, New oh, Jersey. No, that fine. was a victory. Yeah, a good right. The journey took her a record 19 hours, five minutes. Uh, she should have stopped there. Yeah, in 1937, she flew over the Pacific during an attempt to become the first woman to come a circumnavigational flight of the globe. She was three weeks away from turning 40. She was never heard from oh, again. Mm. All right, number one, you know, uh, here's another clip from uh, that Ooh. old cable show, oh, Stairway God. to Stardom. It was a cable access show in New York City from, this, from 1979 to the 90s. Uh, the first guy you're going to see is Anthony Ciula, Ciula mm -hmm. who actually went on to win an Emmy and was nominated for a Tony as a dancer and a choreographer. The second act is comedian Wayne Rubin. All right, great. Wow. See? He's got it. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, here. right. The socks gave him away. Now let's see how the comedian is. Oh, yeah. What do you think this would be a good segment for the show, Larry? Yeah. Just like everyday people who yep. think they have a talent, you bring them in, you're bound to get a ring every once in a while, but you're also going to feature some fairly yeah. average stuff. We don't have any venue for that now. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, we got the hallway. We could build another courtesy desk and yes. set like the one Let's I have out there out. now. Wayne Rubin, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> As you know, every year, Jerry Lewis has a telethon for muscular dystrophy, and of course, it's a very worthwhile cause. But what would happen if he had a telethon for dandruff? I think we'd go something like this. All right, here we are on our 24th hour for dandruff, and so far, we have reached a total of a dollar. A dollar in 24 hours? I have here a letter from the President of the United States that says, Dear Jerry, good luck in your fight against dandruff. What's the matter, Ray? You couldn't send a few dollars with the letter? And now, from the Middle East, I'd like to bring out Here's Menachem Begin. Menachem, come on out here. Louie, Louie, where is he, Louie? He ain't here? Well, Menachem couldn't be with us, so instead I'd like to bring out the voice of racing, Fred Capicella. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. The horses are on the track. It is now post time. In this race, fat lady, 10 pounds over. <laughs> and this it's cabbage by a head. Thank you, Fred. And now, from Jackie Gleason's American Scene magazine, here's Joe the bartender and Crazy Guggenheim. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Donahue? Oh, crazy shows in the back. Oh, oh, specific. Yeah. There's not a lot of good Monacan Bacon jokes out there. It's like kind of a hard one to really kaboom. Wow. Well, it didn't really take mm. off. No. Mike, you're a professional comedian. Where did he yeah, go well, wrong? Was there bad writing? I'm going to say I've seen worse. Well, the lighting was terrific, but I've seen worse than that. I, <laughs> I saw a guy one time with a mic stand was slipping, and instead of lifting it, he just kept going down <laughs> with the microphone and kept talking. So, for real. Like, uh, uh, not even thinking he could grab the mic stand. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, that's another right. nine. 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 All right, 